Hey everyone, Nick Engvall here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you about some of the people that make the sneaker history community and this podcast possible. It's more important than ever to think about who you give your money to when you're buying clothing to go with your kicks. Our friends at Guilty Goods started their brand with a goal of giving back, especially to the communities that make sneaker culture possible. With every purchase from Guilty Goods, at least 10% of the proceeds are donated to organizations like Big Brothers and Big Sisters, the Susan G. Komen Foundation, Movement for Black Lives, and many more. You can save 30% on your order by using the code HISTORY at GuiltyGoods.us. Again, that's HISTORY at GuiltyGoods.us for 30% off, and you can feel good about your purchase knowing you're supporting a meaningful cause. Sneakers are all about presentation, and if you're like me, displaying your kicks at home or in the office is just as important as when they're on your feet. Sneaker Throne makes sneaker display cases featuring customizable LED lights, drop side cases to showcase the entire side of the shoe, not just the heel or the toe, the whole shoe. They've also got display cases for trading card collectors and hat collectors. To me, it's the perfect way to display your collection. You can save at least 10% on your Sneaker Throne order by using the code HISTORY at SneakerThrone.com. That's HISTORY at SneakerThrone.com. If you're a Patreon supporter or a member of our Discord community, you already know about Kicks with V Hot Sauce and his small batch locally sourced hot sauce. V has been one of the biggest supporters of sneaker history and the podcast since the early days. and He's currently the defending champion in our Community Trivia Nights competition. Kicks with V Hot Sauce has been a huge hit with the community. You can save 10% on your order by using the code SneakerHistory10 at KicksWithVHots.com. That's SneakerHistory10 at KicksWithVHots.com. Now, you're probably here because you like sneakers, and if you join the Discord, you know our community is about so much more than that. Whether it's the marathon-like community calls, trivia night debates, the in-person meetups, or just sharing our favorite experiences, we found that although we have such different backgrounds, we all have some unexpected shared passions. Not only does the entire community look out for each other when it comes to releases, we're like a support group for life in general. You can join the Discord community for free by heading to the show notes of this episode. After you're done listening to this episode, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Now let's get into today's episode. What up, what up? Welcome back to the Sneaker History Podcast. Hey, before we get into this episode, I wanted to tell you about a couple of our partners. These are some of the folks that help us keep the podcast going, and they've been nice enough to offer some exclusive discounts for our listeners. Now, if you've watched us on YouTube, you all know how we love to display our kicks when we're not rocking them. Sneaker Throne makes sneaker display cases featuring customizable LED lights, drop side cases to showcase your entire shoe, not just the heel, not just the toe, shoe trees, a number of other sneaker-related accessories. You can save 10% on your Sneaker Throne order by using the code HISTORY. You can find a link to Sneaker Throne in the description, or you can just head to sneakerhistory.com slash sneakerthrone, and it will send you directly to their site. Again, that's 10% off with the code HISTORY. Our friends at Prospect are the premier streetwear brand and sneaker boutique based in sunny San Diego, California. One of my favorite places. Prospect is not your typical hype beast haven, though. They carry classic footwear from brands like Asics, New Balance, Puma, Saucony, as well as local and globally known streetwear brands like Belief, Illust, Rottweiler, Stussy, and many others. Not to mention their own Prospect label and the iconic Just a Kid from Dago collection. If you're a listener of the podcast, you can save 10% on all of your orders from Prospect through their website with the code HISTORY10. That's promo code HISTORY10 at prspctsd.com. Now, if you're a Patreon supporter or a member of our Discord community, you already know about Kicks with V Hot Sauce and his small batch locally sourced hot sauce. V has been one of the biggest supporters of sneaker history and the podcast since the early days. And his hot sauce has been a huge hit with the community. To celebrate the launch of his new coffee habanero flavor hot sauce and his new habanero honey, my personal favorite, he's given an exclusive discount to our podcast listeners. The first 50 people to use the code SneakerHistory10 will save 10% on their order from KicksWithVHots.com. That's SneakerHistory10 at KicksWithVHots.com. If you or someone you know is interested in sponsoring the podcast or becoming a partner with our community, get in touch with us. You can reach us by email at podcast at sneakerhistory.com, and we'll get back to you with information about how we can partner. And now for today's episode. Jordan trying to shake off Smarts. Oh, what a oh, what a Against Gill, the crowd on its feet. Allen for the win! Yeah! The Sneaker History Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Sneaker History Podcast. Cue dramatic music. Cue John Cena music. Since, <laughs> you know, 
Suicide Squad 2, 1.5 just came out. We oh, are your Suicide Squad for the night. I still have to see it. I like how they adopted the Fast and the Furious uh, strategy of putting an article in the beginning of the movie so you know it's a sequel as opposed to putting a number. <laughs> ah, <laughs> like, there you go. Oh, I didn't know what we were doing there. How are my fellow villains doing today, though? I'm being freaking fantastic. <laughs> this is your normal My Starting Five episode, so we're actually just going to get right into it. If you're new to the show, we do this once a week. We go through a snake draft style pick lottery. I say lottery because we do a little random generated lottery to figure out who goes first, which is today Michael. But we go through and pick in a snake style what shoes from a given era or line, in this instance, the LeBron line, we would want to have. So think of your favorite fancy football team. Think of your favorite fancy basketball team. Kind of like that, but with sneakers. So today we have 2011's LeBron Nine. In my mind, we have it open. And I think we confirmed this earlier in the week. It can be samples because more specifically, it's LeBron nines we want to see retro. So not just ones from the past, but ones from the past that maybe never came out that could, in theory, come out in the future. Yes. Yep. So without further ado, Mike, go ahead and tell us what your first pick is in the yeah. LeBron nine draft. I'm going to need to get the uh, NBA draft music going on. Do do do. My first pick is going to be the Watch the Throne LeBron Nine. Since we can go just out there and you know wishful thinking, why the heck not? I mean, ten years since Watch the Throne dropped, I feel like it's perfect to be number one. The black or the gold? The black one. Got to go with the black one. That's a great shoe. It's. I put the gold one on my list. Also, nice. they're, they're that good. Yes. The gold is also on my list. Hopefully it gets to me where I have it on my big. <laughs> that is a, a fantastic shoe. I'm also going to go right to the good stuff. So I'm going to go with the what the MVP nine, the standard edition. Nice. It's not the first what the obviously the what the dunk is the first what the but it's the first use in a basketball shoe, I believe, ever. Uh, in terms of like a performance basketball shoe having a, a what the theme because the what the KD came out well didn't come out around that same time the KD4 mm -hmm. so no other KD before that um, the Kobe 7 was the first one to have a what the that released mm -hmm. so it wasn't that one either so the LeBron 9 what the MVP I believe was the first one and that shit's ugly too it's not even a shoe I don't think I would really wear but it's just such an important shoe to me. Like, I love the way it looks. I think it's one that I salivated over many times. But I just want to have it on a shelf and just look at it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous shoe. Awesome. I think it's my pick next, and I've got the double pick. And I'll use this opportunity to draft shoes from the same pack. But since there's two shoes, I'm going to get both of them. And this was the LeBron championship pack for... The nine, I think it had the MVP as well as the finals. So I'll take both of those shoes, and it's back to you, Robbie, because I'm happy with that. I got good value for my pick, and I didn't get to separate the twins. <laughs> well, I can't remember the the nine. Oh, no, another nine low you're talking about. Never mind. That is a very good one. Um, mm -hmm. Is your high top one that black, red, and gold? See, I thought both of the ones in the LeBron nine championship pack were the high tops, and we didn't get the... Well, there was the gradient. It was like the black with the yellow swoosh, and it's like wasn't like a gradient on the upper. Yes, the okay. red, white, black, yeah, and yellows, and then, then just the red, black with the gold swoosh. Oh, was that the P or the elites you're talking about? Or no, this was just the LeBron Nine Championship Pack. Oh, I gotta look at that one again. I, I think I missed that one. I will go ahead and send it to you, and probably this is yeah, you're right. The LeBron Nine PS Elite was worn by James in Game One of the 2012 Finals, and it's the red and black colorway. I but I'll go ahead and throw now. a link up to the chat just in case we need it, and then hopefully, as Nick is editing, he'll put the right shoe up. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. I just haven't seen him, and well, it's not a shoe you see every day, yeah. but I haven't seen images of that. So yeah, the Elite one is the black, red with the gold check, and then the other pair is as Mike was saying yellow accents with red and yes. white very very cool shoe yeah. it looks like it came with like cool dust bags and exactly 
championship stuff for LeBron is always sick. LeBron always has the best championship stuff. I mean, between that and then the three one pack, as we call it. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. I'm gonna have John Cena stuck in my head all day. <laughs> um, Luckily for you, this. you can't see him. Oh. Luckily, you can't even feel him either. Oh. Uh, he's too strong, man. Can't touch him. So speaking of strength and being strong, I'm going with the LeBron nine low war vet. A nice, subtle oh, camouflage. Cool. Man, so gum bottoms, fantastic. Subtle camo print, fantastic. The LeBron 9 low, slept on, and fantastic. Just a, a, a really, really good shoe that will make people go, oh, like Mike just did. You probably forgot about it, but As did I. gorgeous, gorgeous shoe. Nice pick, dude. That was definitely one that was hiding in the bushes that I did not see. No pun intended with the camouflage. Uh, let's see. So I got the double pick now. I am going to go first with the LeBron 9 Big Bang. I mean, I'm surprised it's still here. I was kind of uh, crossing my fingers you guys didn't pick it, so that would be my number two pick. And my number three pick is actually going to be one that I still want. I hope it retros and the LeBron 9 China colorway. Saw it in person when it released when I was uh, back in college at Nice Kicks, that was just a beautiful looking shoe. So, the release version or the sample? I uh, the release Elite. version because they have a sample on the the Elite, which is super nice too. The China Nine is one that's not that expensive now to get. You can probably get that on a very reasonable price. Ooh la la! Yeah, I keep I keep eyeing it, but you know, words of Robbie, it will retro eventually. So I'm trying to hold back. It will. Now, that Galaxy, that might be the best Galaxy shoe not called a foam posit ever made. Yep. I think it has a, uh, it has a real chance to grab the crown if it's not the Galaxy foam posit. <laughs> <laughs> Anything but that. But really good picks. Um, I'm actually going to keep it with the LeBron 9 all day. I'm going to go with the LeBron old Palmer 9 dang it, dang it, dang it. <laughs> low top. I'm going to go with the lighter one that's kind of more like lemon limey, I'm going to call it. Yep. I uh, don't really know how to better describe it. But the LeBron 9 introduced a lot of really crazy prints that will later get used over and over and over and over and over again. So the original LeBron old Palmer 9 is just a fantastic shoe. So the Very low nice top so. Palmer. Very nice. Excellent. Uh, I'll take a page out of your playbook then, Robbie. I'll also go LeBron 9. I'll also go LeBron old Palmer. I'll go the reverse, though, because I think Ooh. that's equally as good of a shoe. Uh, but, yeah, the original, you just can't beat it. So I'm hoping to just be a mayor mere imitator and just try to flatter you and say, yeah, let's complete the set. <laughs> let's be friends. Let's be friends. Let's be LeBron old buddies. <laughs> Speaking of which, LeBron old Palmer's at Deadstock <laughs> Coffee. That's my plug for you, Ian. Yeah. Thank you, and you're welcome. Uh, and then for me, the next shoe I will go ahead and pick will be the Miami Hurricanes LeBron 9. Just love that colorway. And for whatever reason, the LeBron shoe always kind of made it pop in a little bit more vibrant way than others. So much so that when it came to the LeBron 11, I was actually fortunate enough to design a pair of 11 IDs for a proof of concept. And I tried to mirror it the best I could. My orange was a little bit lighter. But those are my two picks, the reverse LeBron old Palmer, uh, Palmer and then the Miami Hurricanes 9. Did you put Back the, to you, Robbie. Did you put the foam posit uh-huh. side on your ID? I tried to. <laughs> nice. That's a cool little print, though. That's a very, very, very good pick. I mean, I'm surprised you went Miami or Florida that early, but if you like the color, you like the color, so it doesn't yeah. matter. That's kind of why I'm going with this next one. I just love the color so much. Don't do it to me. I traded... I traded these, and then I traded for them, and I traded them away way too fast. The LeBron 9 Miami Knight. So what did you trade them for, and what did you trade them I don't remember. I don't remember what I got rid of them for, man. I'm not going to lie. So I traded my black flips for the LeBron 9 Miami Knight. I do not remember what I got rid of them for. I want to say Cardinal 7s. I want to say Cardinal 7s, which I don't have anymore either. Well, so at the time, I could see that trade. Uh, I mean. None but, exist. Just yeah. <laughs> the, pink, the pink swoosh is so good with that, yeah. with the weave pattern, the pink with the weave and the gray, yeah. kind of like a metalish gray. And the pink was 3M. That's I had the same pair. I wish I still had them to this day. The great shoe. 
Mm-hmm. It was all a dream when I had them. It was fantastic. Dang it. Now I'm just nostalgic on the shoe. Great. Um, all right. So I got my four and five picks coming up. The shoe I yep. thought you were going to say, I'm glad it's still here, is the LeBron 9 Cannon. If I'm not mistaken, that was one of the launch colorways, right? Can't remember. It was. But that was just a beautiful shoe. Kind of sticking in that same green, orange palette. But, man, something about it just it's a beautiful looking shoe. And to round off my top five is going to be a PE and it's going to be the uh, dunk man sample for the LeBron nine elite, the all volt with the black carbon fiber print on the side Things So wild. I would, I wish that released. Nice. I couldn't you go know with the how cannons. you were talking about that. You wanted certain shoes to retro. I hope we get the cannon retro because I think it's, Probably the quintessential colorway for that shoe, but that's just me. Yes. I yes. also had a pair of Cannons in my life that I no longer own. I don't remember what I got rid of them for, for either. I've had a lot of I've had a lot of LeBrons in my day. I couldn't pick the Cannon now because it sounds too much like Nick Cannon. And he just did a really funny interview with the Breakfast Club, so I can't even with Cannons right now. <laughs> um, this last one's tough. There's so many good colorways. Um, I am also going to do I sample it up? No, I'm going to go with another just inline colorway. I'm going to go with the Floridian 9 low. So the orange with the pink. I feel like the the LeBron 9 and the 8 both were like the best times for those really hot colored pastels. Like the the really neon light-ish. The fireberries, in a sense. Yeah, I mean, because there was a fireberry. Um, there was a fireberry. Was this, that was like more of a metallic one. It was a weird take on it. But the – I forgot what I was talking about already. Yeah, the Floridians, just like the really bright, vibrant orange with that pink. I like the LeBron 9 a, little, a lot too because as much as I love to look at the LeBron 9, real talk, the tongue is awkward as fuck. The, the little plastic parts that are like lace locks but not kind of little bunny ear – it's, it's all awkward around the ankle, man. It's like the ankle protector, the sidewalls, if you will, way too high for just like a casual wear. Tongue's awkward. The way it, it laces in. So if, if you ever laced a pair of LeBron 9s, mm-hmm. it kind of tucks underneath, for lack of a better word, the foreskin of the tongue. And it's like awkward to get a pair in there. They're awkward to lace. The 9 low fixed a lot of those problems. And likewise, I think the nine elite fixed a lot of the problems too but wearing lebron nines kind of sucks but looking at lebron nines paintings on the wall <laughs> perfect all right uh with my last pick i will go for a low because i don't i uh, know i had a low already but i'll still double up on the lows and i'll go the liverpool number nine LeBron nice. low because I think he had ownership in the club and I just mm-hmm. thought it was really good. And once again, I really wish we got the product that was initially promised to us that had a lot of the Liverpool insignia on it because I think what did eventually release that year kind of just seemed like a tame, diluted version of the sneaker that we were initially promised. So I'm holding out hope that if it retros, I think for a third time because it also retroed last year to probably one of the quieter drops, that we get more of those details that we were initially clamoring for. Nice. I don't think that she retro last year, did it? According to StockX, there was a 2020 drop of it. Yeah, that's I a, saw that too. I think it was, I don't know if it was like very regionalized, but it was no, nothing man. was said about it. I would bet no, my life that didn't happen. I'd bet my life that didn't happen. I'll but so. no, I was going to say, you're here before us, Robbie, so it didn't happen. So we'll take uh, that because we need you for the podcast. Still fantastic shoe. You have all the right to keep it. But it's like, man, I know for a fact that shoe did not come out. Not, not not in a bad way, but stockings yeah. will be like that sometimes. Or even, you know, shoes have a date, and then, like, these really don't happen. Like, think about the – ultimately it happened, but the Sulphur, or I guess Del Sol Kobe 6s, there was a stock X date for those for, the you know, 2020. Yeah. They did not they did not ever really. Yeah, I see the article but, for it, and maybe it just, it just says late 2020, so it probably never did, especially with everything going on pushback, so – Fingers crossed, roll if they didn't, and we get them later down the line. Yeah, it's open. Anyway. The benefit are we is on to the six men and six women of our shoes, if we will? We are. Okay. All right. So my last entry for my team, my six man, is actually going to be LeBron Lowe, and it's one that I owned for a while, and I, I beat the mess out of it, but the LeBron 9 USA Lowe 
one of my favorite colorways. Very, nice. uh, very nice, very underrated. Love that shoe. It's one of the better. This is one of the better USA shoes. Yeah. Ever? I mean, I'm trying to think of how I'm trying to think of ten better shoes than that one. And, really, and we did an Olympic USA basketball episode too. And we definitely didn't mention this one whatsoever. No, we didn't. But very unpatriotic of us. We, we messed up. <laughs> seeing it again, it's like, dang, that's like anything. Like a player could wear that, and a coach, not in a bad way, but like, I feel like that would pull off a nice quarter zip, very tastefully. Very, very nicely. <laughs> a nice Coach K quarter zip. That'd be very good. Yeah. I'm actually gonna go with the gold Watch the Thrones for my last one. Very bright and gaudy. But see, I almost feel like those should have been the Watch the Thrones because of the nature of that album, especially that very famous color uh, yeah. or cover rather. And yeah, like that album is decadence. That's the first, as Questlove put it, the hip hop stadium album where the music deserved to be played through the speakers within a stadium. And yeah. I think we all hopefully got to see that live. And then everybody was kind of comparing, all right, how many times did they perform in Paris at the end of the show for you? Because the show I was at, they got through three. And then I know somebody that went to, I think it was in Austria when they did the unprecedented 19 times. So yeah, great era, great shoe. They played the same song album. 19 times in a row? Yeah, that was like the whole thing. They would get to the chorus and then they would start the song over again. That. All right. All right. Yeah, I, was like, I don't know what to say. I like the song, but dang. Repeat, repeat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absurd. But like you're in the heat of the moment. And you're like, yeah, one more time. We got to do better because I run remember it run it back a fifth time or a fourth time. Oh, you see Dormammu in the back. Like, no. No. <laughs> Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Oh. Man. Uh, and then for, I guess, the final six-man pick or the six-person pick, I'll go with the Elite Taxis. Just like that oh, yellow and black color. That's a good looks one. Like a nice like that taxi. That's also on my list of heavy contenders. It was actually the first one I wrote for Elites. Very nice. good shoe. Good pick. Stuff, Jalen. Already, Mike, go ahead and tell us your starting five and one. Yep. Recap. Number one, Watch the Throne 9, Black. Uh, number two, Big Bang All-Star. Number three, China. Number four, Cannon. Number five was the uh, postseason or elite dunk man PE. And our sixth man or sixth person is going to be the USA Lowe. USA. All right. So I have the Wet the MVP. I have the War Vet Low. I have the LeBron Palmer Normal Low. I also have the Miami Knight, and then finishing out, we have the Floridian 9 low, and then my sixth man is the gold watch the throne. Awesome. And then for my recap, I have both shoes coming out of the championship pack. I have the LeBron Palmer's reverse colorway. I have the Miami Hurricanes colorway. I have the Liverpool lows. And then as my sixth person, I went out with the taxis. Nice. Before we... Rap, is there any one shoe you didn't put on your list that immediately or now after thinking about it, you could switch one out for one other person? Anything make Christmas you go? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm jealous that Mike made the cannon pick, but I'm also surprised we didn't get any South Beach love. I for sure thought one of us would have gotten a pick or some version of that shoe in some way, shape, or form for <laughs> our rotation. It was right underneath the taxis on my list. So it was up there. The mango almost got picked instead of the Miami Knights Ooh, for me. I forgot about the mango. That was a nice color. Very bright mango. I had those mm -hmm. ones too. I just hate I literally own no LeBron nines now. They're not I'm gonna size up when they retro. Oh yeah. They were super small. Not, I had to go half size not up for mine. And like just cut the top off. I don't know. You can't. I mean, that you tongue's can, awful. You can't. That tongue is not good. But Anywho, the shoe is great. We have the whole reason why we're talking about this is because we're supposed to have a nine South Coast, which is a weird nickname. I don't know what that means. I'm very curious to. Is that an Australian thing? Like, don't they call one of their coasts the South Coast? I don't know. You gotta ask somebody. Right. Any Australian viewers out there, let us know because yeah. we are lost for words. So I'm very curious about that, but that sparked this conversation. So what LeBron 9 did we not put on the list that you would have liked to have seen? What LeBron 9 would make your starting fives? Go ahead and leave us a comment. Tell us on Instagram. 
leave a review and tell us. Go tell your mother and have her write us a letter. However you want to address it. Please just let us know your thoughts. We appreciate you guys being here. Make sure you're following at Sneaker History on all major platforms. And, yeah, thanks for tuning in to My Starting Five. Peace. See ya. Hey, everyone. This is Nick again. Before you take off, I wanted to thank you for listening to the Sneaker History Podcast. We just launched our new merch, including tees, stickers, keychains, and a bunch of other pieces you can grab to show your support for the podcast. You can purchase it now through our companion site, sittingtreasure.com. You can also get access to more episodes of the podcast by joining our Discord community at patreon.com slash sneakerhistory. Plus, we've got a bunch of other fun things going on in the community, including trivia nights, giveaways, access to sneaker raffles from around the world, release announcements, and my favorite, just good people helping good people get the sneakers they want. Plus, we're not bought by advertisers, investors, or other big money. I'm confident in saying this is the best sneaker community I've ever been a part of. We've also teamed up with a few partners to offer our supporters discounts. You can find some in the links for this episode and even more in our Discord. Give us a try, and if you don't enjoy it, you can always cancel the membership at any time. Last but not least, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to be on the receiving end of someone showing appreciation. Thank you all for the support, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace. Hey everyone, this is Nick again. Before you take off, do us a solid and head over to Apple Podcasts to leave us a review. Give us a rating on Spotify and Amazon Music, and make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel because we have even more video content coming soon. Speaking of new content, we have an amazing community of sneaker enthusiasts that hang out in our Sneaker History Discord on a daily basis. While sneakers is a connection point that brought us all together, we've all discovered countless shared passions that we have in common with each other. We recently launched a couple of new podcasts directly from our community. One of them is a Formula One podcast. If you're an F1 fan like me, the Exhaust Notes podcast is your weekly fix of Formula One fun. It's hosted by myself, Rohit Malhotra, and Todd Yates. New episodes drop every Tuesday. I've been wearing fitted hats for years and collecting my favorite teams since I was a little leaguer. It has been awesome to see so many new fans getting into fitteds in recent years. Crown and Stitch is our new talk show about fitted hats with Dexter, Keith, and myself, where we talk about fitted hats, snapbacks, throw in some obscure hats because we all kind of like some funky stuff once in a while, don't we? Copping, collecting, and so much more. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Hit the links in the show notes for this episode to give our new shows a listen, and be on the lookout for more new podcasts dropping soon. Last but not least, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Thank you all for the support, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.